Hi Canadian aviators, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at the top IATRA exam questions that you can expect on your exam. These questions are current as of 2024. I made this video to help you out. If you wanna know exactly what this IATRA exam means and why do you need it and what are some of the requirements, you can check out the link in the description right here and you can watch this after this video. As always, you can skip right to the sections that you require in the timeline in the description. All right, let's look at my top favorite questions that you can expect on this exam. All right, let's look at the first one. A pilot is flying at 18,000 feet and forgot to reset the altimeter from 30.02 inches to 29.92 inches. What will the aircraft's actual or true altitude be above ground? Is it the true altitude will be higher? Is it the true altitude will be lower? Is it the true altitude will be the same? Or it has nothing to do with the true altitude. So we think about it, we're going from high to low, look out below, that's a common phrase we use in aviation. So the answer is, the true altitude will be lower. Next. On the 250 millibar upper air analysis chart, that chart corresponds to which altitude? Is it 10,000 feet? 18,000 feet? 34,000 feet? Or 5,000 feet? This is one of those things you just have to memorize and the answer is 34,000 feet. There's other ones you have to memorize for your exam, but this one seems to be the most common question. Next question is on human factors. Pilots should not fly before 24 hours since they last had a drink. What part of the body does the alcohol stay the longest? Is it the stomach, the inner ear, the outer ear, or the eyes? See, normally you have to wait 12 hours before you fly again. We call that 12 hours bottle to throttle. But after 24 hours, it can still have a lasting effect and that effect occurs in the inner ear. Let's look at the next question. How is the aircraft's pressurization controlled? Let's look at the few options that are here. And the answer is, it's controlled by controlling the outgoing air using outflow valves. So the outflow valves are little valves at the back of the airplane that open and close multiple times a second, and uh, they actually control the pressurization exiting the aircraft. All right, next is weather radar. What is the recommended technique to scan a thunderstorm using a weather radar? Is it scan and monitor the middle and lower cells? Turn the gain up to see the faint areas? scan and monitor the middle and upper cells or tilt the radar to reduce attenuation and the proper scanning for weather radar you want to scan the areas that are near the bottom because that's the area of the thunderstorm that has the most amount of precipitation so scan and monitor the middle and lower cells if you scan too high in a thunderstorm you'll get mostly ice crystals so that's why we want to scan the bottom of the cell What is the alternate IFR minimum for when there's no IFR approach available? This is a good one. This is very common on the instrument rating exam as well as the IATRA exam. So the answer is, if there's no IFR approach available, then the forecast should be no lower than 500 feet above the minimum IFR altitude. That'll permit a VFR landing. Basically, they want you to break out of clouds and then visually maneuver and land the aircraft. The major purpose of the Transportation Safety Board is to assign blame for the charges. Uh, well, no, we know right away that's not what they do. Use the findings as evidence in court. <laughs> no. Prevent reoccurrence. That seems about right. And provide data for insurance companies. Eh, not really. So a lot of the Transport Canada exams, you can always ignore two of the options right away. So the two most ridiculous ones are assign blame and use the evidence in court. And if you think about it, they're very similar in terms of the answer. So the most correct answer that we're choosing is prevent reoccurrences. Next question is to do with the air regulations. So the pilot in command of a VFR aircraft shall revise the ETA at the point of the ATIS, which is the Air Defense Identification Zone. It's the, the bubble at the border of Canada. So before you touch that defense zone bubble, 
you must inform an air traffic control unit when the aircraft is not expected to arrive within is it plus or minus five minutes and five miles is it plus or minus five minutes and 20 miles it's plus or minus three minutes and 20 miles or is it plus or minus three minutes and five miles hmm this is a tough one and the answer is ETA of plus or minus five minutes and within 20 nautical miles what is the floor and ceiling of the Arctic control area? Is it flight level 230 and above? Flight level 270 and above? Above 10,000 feet? Or 18,000 feet and above? And the answer is flight level 270 and above. Now we have to also memorize the other control areas because we have the Arctic control area, we have the Northern control area, and we have the regular controlled airspace below 18,000 feet. All right, let's look at the last and final question. An aircraft is flying at 24,000 feet. We would normally say flight level 240. The elevation is 500 feet. How far back can you pick up the VOR signal for navigation? So this is a question where you have to actually do some math. So some of the options here, let's pull up. So we have to use a VOR reception range formula for this one. So the VOR reception range is equal to 1.23 times the square root of the aircraft's height above ground level. So if you take 1.23 times and you minus the elevation from the altitude, so that's 23,500 feet, we get 1.23 times 1.53, and that comes out to 188 nautical miles. It's pretty simple. All right, thanks for watching till the end. If you want my help in preparing for this exam and passing with a really high mark, check out the link in the description below. I've helped hundreds of pilots in Canada study and pass this exam in record timing. If you're interested, you can also check out these videos that I'm going to post up here. You might be interested in this one or you might be interested in this one. Take care.